I have a, um, a picture that is a watercolor painted by uh, Anne Zion. I don't know if any of you might remember Anne Zion. Uh, she was a member of this church with her mom, uh, Mary and George, uh, was her dad, Mary and George Zion. Mary was my Sunday school teacher in this church up in um, Burien. And uh, they came to my family's house for Christmas. Um, and that, and Mary, um, Anne uh, was... Uh, developmentally challenged not um, you know she never held a job she had she had issues and so her art was um, meaningful to me the watercolor that I purchased at a silent auction that supported her as an artist and you know emotionally as an artist and supported my church and it's a picture of a church um, it's a connection piece. It means connection, not just to Anne, but to my Sunday school teachers, to the ushers that I saw. Mary and George were often ushers. Um, it was a connection. It is a connection. So I've decided I'm bringing it here. You guys are auctioning it at the fall auction. I hope it gets a lot of money. And buttons. I have a, a jar of buttons, and I put them out in the garage sale, but I couldn't sell them. I had one person wanted to buy them, and I said no. <laughs> <laughs> They're my grandmother's buttons, and my great-grandmother's buttons, and my mother's buttons, and, and they're, they have meaning. They mean that I'm connected. They mean I'm a member of a tribe, and they're holding me hostage. All of these things. <laughs> They're just things. And then I start thinking about getting rid of stuff. I wouldn't want my mother to find out I got rid of those buttons. Oh my God! The world might come to an end. Because it would mean that I didn't value that connection with all those women. But it's not true. It's not true. Those things are great. They're, it's fabulous to have a manifest representation that can remind us of the meaning of, of our connection, of the meaning that we have in the world. But if it holds us hostage, then we are no longer free. It's all going. It's all going. There are some things that I have to um, let go of, and there are some things I don't. The scrapbooks, the pictures, they're not going. They're going with me. Most everything else, I got to let go. I got to let go. They can't hold me. So what stuff is in your life? I know we all have stuff. And we don't have to let go unless there's a good reason. You know, that stuff is beautiful to have to remind us of our connection, of our meaning. I um, want to see if there's anything I missed here. Mm. A couple of years ago, um, we we're meeting in small group circles. I don't know if your church is, if, if we're still doing that. You're doing small group study circles, book studies, and that kind of stuff? Yeah? We were meeting at Kathy Swanson's house on a fairly regular basis, and we uh, did a book study from um, The Path by Lori Beth Jones. And The Path was a book that led us through exercises and questions that allowed us to create a personal statement about why we're here, who we've come here to be. And so when I had to take a class the last spring called The Call to Ministry, and I found out that that's what we were going to do, was figure, you know, do a personal statement, I thought, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll go along with it. I'll do it. I already know what my personal statement is. I did it with my church friends, blah, blah, blah. A little cocky. <clears throat> but, um, but I thought, okay, I'll just go ahead and review it and, and make sure that nothing's changed. 
I have to tell you, I don't even know what my personal statement was that, that came out of the, um, the path, the book that we did here. Um, my personal statement today is one with spirit. I call others to join me as we claim lives of freedom and joy through personal development and spiritual experience. One with spirit, I call others to join me as we claim lives of freedom and joy through personal, experience, personal uh, development and spiritual experience. Hmm, that's good. That's good stuff, isn't that great? Who cares what the other one was? <laughs> but it gives me a responsibility, right? It means that I have to step up. If I'm going to ask other people to join me, then I better at least be on the path. I better have let go. I better not be held bondage by stuff. Right? The um, hidden curriculum that I talked about in the beginning, it's personal development. You know, it's the personal uh, development that we all go through, and it's available to us all the time. Everybody's got a hidden curriculum available. If you think you haven't got one, it's just because you're not paying attention. Most of the people in this room have done some work on their stuff. We got stuff. We've decided to rename it, my classmates and I, the unwritten curriculum because we don't know what it's going to be. If it was hidden, it wouldn't bother us so much. If it was hidden, we might not notice. But it's not hidden. It shows up and slaps us in the face and says, you can't let go of those buttons. You can't let go of those buttons. You have to take, those, you have to take that picture. You, have to, you bought that furniture. You have to take that furniture with you. But it's not true. Mm -hmm. It's not hidden. We all get an opportunity to grow. We all get an opportunity to um, make stuff up in a way that serves us, in a way that provides meaning in our lives. I um, struggled quite a bit in, uh, in how to close. I really wanted to write a poem. I really, really, because Steve closes, for those of you who are new, our, our regular minister, he write, reads a poem. He writes a poem, a new poem, every week. And then he reads the poem for the congregation every week. And I really wanted to do that, and I didn't. Mm -hmm. What I'd really like is I'd like to hear you all say that you claim lives of freedom and joy. I claim a life of freedom and joy. Together? I claim a life of freedom and joy. One more time. I claim a life of freedom and joy. Thank you. <laughs>